This is the story of a game called Sea Hero Quest. In both its mobile and VR form, Sea Hero Quest tasks you with memorising maps, navigating a boat around colourful seascapes, and firing a flare gun to mark where you started. But under the surface, Sea Hero Quest has a much more important goal. It hopes to provide the data that could help humanity fight an incurable disease that affects hundreds of millions of people. In Sea Hero Quest, you sail a small boat around ocean mazes, collecting missing pages from your father's journal. He's losing his memory, and by retracing his old adventures, you hope to help him remember. As the player begins each level, they are shown a map, sometimes with sections that are faded or completely missing, and tasked with navigating to a point or series of points from memory. Once the player begins the level, they cannot check the map again without restarting. At the end of each level, the player either retrieves a missing page, often seeing a giant, friendly sea creature in the process, or is tasked with firing a flare gun back to where they began, with stars dished out for how quickly you complete the task. Some levels have you navigating through fog or throw up surprises to throw you off course, and later levels become pretty difficult to remember. This nightmare roundabout, for example, took me several attempts to complete. Now this might sound like any other mobile game, but there's actually a lot more going on here, and to understand that, we need to meet the people who designed the game. Not just developers, but scientists too. This is Hugo Spears. He's a professor of cognitive neuroscience at University College London, and his research focuses on the ways in which people navigate environments and how that changes when people suffer dementia or Alzheimer's disease. One of the earliest symptoms you might see in Alzheimer's dementia is uh, people becoming disoriented. Certainly going somewhere new, they'll get confused more than they used to. And it seems that that now predates that in their lifespan, the, the memory problems you typically associate, like forgetting everything. If we can understand people's spatial behavior, how they navigate better, you can start to build tools that might detect the subtlest changes that might occur for someone in, in Alzheimer's disease. One of the big problems with researching these changes is that it's incredibly difficult to test how people navigate big environments in a lab setting, and it's incredibly time consuming testing people one by one. But back in 2016, a phone call from Michael Hornberger, a professor of dementia research at the University of East Anglia, sparked an idea. Could we build a video game that could be provide a mass population of people, monitor the data coming out of the video game, and build this monitoring tool to capture the, the earliest signs of uh, being disoriented in Alzheimer's? And so Michael and Hugo were introduced to Max Scott Slade, the founder of an indie developer named Glitches. Glitches was formed to eff effectively build games that had some kind of creative or technological leap. Every single project we wanted to work on had to do something that pushed the boundaries of games in some way. I really wanted to learn as much about the experiments they were already doing. Not only what the experiments were, but how the data was valuable for their research. So then we could try and manipulate the, the design of the game to, to facilitate all of those questions. With glitches and in association with the charity Alzheimer's Research UK, Michael and Hugo assembled a team of other neuroscientists and secured funding for the project from Deutsche Telekom, alongside marketing and communications company Saatchi & Saatchi. Not exactly your typical games industry collaboration. It quickly became clear that this would not be a typical game development process. As well as making it fun, the team needed to ensure that the game would stand up as a legitimate scientific study. So we couldn't have collectible coins, for example, because that would be attractive to the player to go towards. All kinds of things actually subconsciously become navigational aids for the human brain. We couldn't have shadows that would lead the player to believe they were facing one way or another, and we couldn't have a sun in the sky. The only thing that they were allowed to use was the environment itself and the landmarks that were placed around the level. As they play, the player's position and movement around the level is relayed to the researchers in the form of data. Each decision of whether to turn left or right, speed up or slow down, helps paint a picture of how people navigate the mazes, and the accuracy of their flare shooting helps measure how well oriented the player is when they reach their destination. When the game is played on a mass scale, this allows the researchers to see population level statistics for how well people are able to navigate the mazes across different age groups, gender identities, nationalities, and so on. This method of data collection the game employs is about 150 times faster than traditional dementia research while still remaining completely scientifically valid. The question now, 
was how many people would actually play the game. Michael and Hugo were really excited if they could collect 10,000 people. I said, look, I think we need to be more, more ex extreme with our predictions. I think we can probably do 100,000 people. For context, a typical dementia study might feature 100 participants if the researchers were lucky. But if 100,000 people played Sea Hero Quest for just two minutes, it would generate the same amount of data as 50 years of traditional dementia research. They were aiming high, but if they could achieve it, 100,000 players would be a game changer. It was the day of the launch. One of the Deutsche Telekom crew came over and said to me, we've just gone over 100,000 participants or 100,000 players. So we did the sort of like wishful thinking number in the first 10 hours. It was jaw dropping really when we saw the numbers rack up of how many people were generating data. I can't think of any other test out there that's as precise as this because there's just so many people who helped out with the research. In the first week we had over a million and, and, and now the project in total over the, the course of its life when it was available as a consumer game on the App Store, four and a half million people played that game. The strategy around reaching out and the effort made to, to reach people was just phenomenal, far beyond any research study I've seen and just wonderful to see that work. Over the course of its journey, the 4.4 million players who played Sea Hero Quest provided Hugo, Michael and the team with data that would have taken traditional dementia research 17,000 years to collect from a diverse global pool of participants. Sea Hero Quest is by far the largest dementia research project in history, and it wasn't just traditional gamers playing the game either. When you look at the demographic spread of who played the game, over 195 countries were logged as having people playing it. We have people right the way through from 18 to the 90s playing the game. Actually seeing older people come to games because of the content and family members who wanted to support someone who had been through Alzheimer's dementias and sadly lost them, they felt empowered by a video game. And I love that. I thought that was so amazing to be able to do that. In the years since its release in 2016, the data collected by Sea Hero Quest has proven its worth as a research tool and helped scientists around the world understand more about how Alzheimer's disease and dementia develops. So one thing is that we've been able to show that the game Sea Hero Quest does a better job of distinguishing people at high genetic risk of Alzheimer's. The tests will pick them up better than the gold standard measures for tracking uh, Alzheimer's disease. That's where we really see the value in having a test like this to kind of help with that. It's literally levels from the game, so we haven't modified it. So that's the value here is that spending all that careful time with the glitches, trying to build the game very carefully, means we now have this full test that is that game. If you're watching this video, chances are you love games. And if you're anything like me, the idea of scientists and developers using the medium you love to make the world a better place is incredibly exciting. As for Hugo and Max, their hope is that this is just the beginning. There is really a huge benefit I can see between bringing psychologists together with uh, with games developers to do more. And my view is they don't really the games developers don't need to do much more than what they're doing. It's about connecting up and sharing the data really. So I'm optimistic, but I think it's going to take more effort. It's not a simple this is a no-brainer. It's going to take more effort. Uh, but I am optimistic that it, it, more will be more will happen. Yeah. When Sea Hero had that kind of success, it really changed my mind about what kind of projects I should be working on as a as a designer developer. I'm always going to chase the problems we should solve as a society. Games are so powerful, and I think we need to stop thinking of them purely as entertainment. And I don't think we should go away from that because I think that's what makes them so engaging. I think we need to start thinking of them as tools, as utilities to do something other than just entertain. We're just at the beginning. The, the whole thing is, is open to sort of tipping on its head, I believe. As of the time of recording, Sea Hero Quest is no longer freely available to play, although glitches do tell me they plan to relaunch the game in full next year. Thankfully, if you don't want to wait until next year, Hugo and Glitches have set up this email address that's on screen now and down in the bio. If you want to play Sea Hero Quest and help contribute to the dataset, feel free to email them and you'll be sent an access code to play a series of levels from the game. There is still no cure for Alzheimer's disease or dementia, but perhaps in years to come, we'll look back on Sea Hero Quest and the research it produced and realise it marked a kind of turning point in the fight against the disease. We're all pretty used to seeing video games getting vilified in the media for all sorts of reasons and even catching the blame for some real world problems, which is why I think Sea Hero Quest is worth celebrating. It's a fantastic example of video games being used to make the world a better place. As Max says, let's hope this is just the beginning.